Sheet metal is the car. Remove and replace fastback quarter panels. Doing the cutting and the welding and building the actual car. To change this into this. So what I'm gonna do is take a muffler cutter and slice around this. Getting everything fitting right. This is bare metal from the factory. This is the restoration. This right here. A lot of people get scared because they don't want to get into this upper area, so they always splice them in. Changing the quarters out, changing the floors out. That's not stock up here. Yeah, they patch this. I'm building the actual structure of what is the car. Now that we can get the Dynacorn quarters, there's no reason they're not putting this all in. That true bones, the foundation. We'll use factory spot welds. Without the good foundation, you got nothing. And if you'd like more of this type of content, hit that subscribe button. You know how you said you'd cross that bridge when you come to it? Well, here it is. And hit that like button. Coop quarters spliced in below this line. Why would anybody do that? Quarters on a fastback rise up much higher. A Shelby has the same quarter panel plus upper and lower scoops. Quarter panels from coupe or convertible will fit that lower half of the fastback quarter and eliminate having to pull the upper part of that panel. The problem with that is, is then you got to put so much filler in through here to cover all that up. And what about availability. Probably in the 80s there was probably some still around a full fastback quarter but once you got in the 90s you ain't gonna find them and now they sell for crazy money for an NOS quarter panel. Fit. Have you got the quarters? Have you... Luckily the aftermarket kicked in and we have reproduction quarter panels. And they're every bit as good as original. Are these painted or what? This pure metal? It's a weld through primer. You can just weld right straight through with a MIG welder. Now, spot welder, you gotta, you got to clean it. The factory, they install these quarters with mostly spot welding, some MIG. There's also some brass involved and lead. But before we take off those quarter panels, we have to media blast the entire unibody, which is a single molded unit. The body and frame are engineered into one piece. That's why rear quarters must be cut off and welded on. Right, right behind a car over there. This shop, set up to do one to two cars at a time. His rotisserie is on wheels. I built this thing from scratch before you could buy them. American Ingenuity. He just rolls it right under the unibody. Some rotisseries that you buy actually come up under and will bolt to the bottom of the frame. Jason built this rotisserie to bolt to the front and rear of the unibody, leaving the bottom, top, and sides of the car free to work on. I can rotate it by myself when I'm blasting and you can lay it turn it on its side and it will sit there you gotta have rotisserie you gotta have blasting stuff like I got that huge blasting unit people do their own work with small blasters and then you gotta have the know-how to put all this stuff together you gotta know mechanics you gotta know paint and body you gotta know wiring you gotta know upholstery most of these guys that do they, they think you can paint a car oh it's restored no it takes full tear down like this and restore each little component, each little system to make the whole project restored. When you gotta rely on other people for your restoration stuff, you, you lose quality. Most of this restoration will be done in this shop by one person, including disassembly, refurbishing parts, rust repair, paint and body work, upholstery and reassembly, re-chroming such as for seat belts and the original gas cap, they get sent out too. Now engine work will be done at a machine shop, but Jason will still bolt the engine together here in the shop. After we get on the rotisserie, I will transport this out to my other shop and go through the blasting process. And now it's on all its weights on the uh, rotisserie. Pull the pin out. Raise it, rotate it any which way you want. It goes a full 360. By yourself. Pretty balanced. You can rotate it in a paint booth, spray the bottom, turn it the other way, spray the other side. Pan, because you can sit right here, weld in, grind. 
These are actually, these were galvanized from Ford. The rocker panels were galvanized. The inner rocker panels were galvanized. These frame rails here, they're all different color. And the top of the cow panel were galvanized. Same way with the rear. The rear torque boxes here, frame rails, all galvanized. And that protected against rust. Very few cars in that era had any kind of galvanization whatsoever. Now everything's galvanized. Make sure to scrape off all the gunk like we found on this 66 model. Our unibody is a bare shell. It's ready for media blasting. Gotta do this before you start cutting on that metal. Starting off with three bags of black diamond media in extra fine grade. Cuts very well, doesn't produce a lot of heat. This is recycled coal flakes. Medium and coarse grades would be more suited to heavily rusted metals. The recycled coal dust will actually cut rust, cut paint, it'll pit glass, it'll take off anything. Including this. That's one high rent district mouse nest. And that's what I use on the bottom and stuff like that where you got like a, a rusty surface and you want to clean it. If you're just taking a paint off then I use the, uh, the soda. The bottom I use the coal dust. Likewise the engine bay. Most of the unibody, but not the sheet metal. And the inside of the car, I use the coal dust because it cuts and cleans any kind of surface rust, paint, seam sealers. It cuts everything off. After I blast it, that's when we uh, installed the quarter panels. It's still on a rotisserie. Yeah, the car's on jack stands right now to stabilize it as I put the quarter panels on. Easy to inspect now. This, after blasting, a little bit of rust popped up right here. You can see some holes in that edge right there. We're getting ready to remove the quarter panels, so I'm marking the uh, spot welds using a Sharpie pen. And this panel, this filler panel actually overlaps the quarter panel, same way with the roof. The roof was put on after the quarter panel was. And you can put the quarter back under the roof. It's easily done, or you can just put it on top. Finding the spot welds, some of them you can see well, some of them you can't see well. These are all factory spot welds. I like to kind of mark the whole well. That way when you drill it, you know you got the whole thing. Before robots, so people did these and they are not in any kind of pattern. They could be three close together in a clump or they could be stretched out. You can see here I've already drilled, drilled some pilot holes in these. With a 1 8 inch drill bit, and I just drill it through the first layer. Some people drill it all the way through. On this particular car, when you do a restoration, you don't want holes protruding through on the panel. I just try to drill through the top metal. The metal underneath is the car. We don't want to damage it. And then I'll use a spot weld cutter. Just drill them out. And you pick the bit size by the size of spot weld. These are two brand new ones. They're a double ended on this style. These ain't quite 3 8 so I'll use like a 3 8 bit. That way you get the whole thing cut and then it releases it. And then you gotta get in there with a chisel and kind of pop them loose. What I'll do is I'll actually slice this panel off, slice through the brass, and there's actually spot welds on the inside. And then you can, once you get that out of the way, you can access the spot welds and get that little sliver out. So this is a braze brass welding that they used from the factory in specific spots on the car and here here and right here where the the tail panel comes apart and they did it in the corners just to kind of smooth up the edge and then usually on the seams like right here you can see it but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back and replace it with brass so we'll braise that back just like it was it's kind of what you'd call assembly line it was done by a worker that say a Friday, he wanted to go home. This stuff is sloppy, it's not precision. And that's where a lot of restoration shops, there's, there's a line there. You have customers that want precision, they want it perfect. Uh, then you have customers that want it sloppy, like original. And that's the sloppiness of this brass, that's that concourse stuff. They also did it, each one of these pointed body lines in this area, of course, these have been replaced. You can see some brass here. But this would have been brazed here and brazed here and then brassed right through here. You can see remnants of that small little spot there. But since these were re replaced, that is gone now. But I will put that back just like factory. And we'll, uh, we'll go in there and I will seam seal them just like factory did. More factory spot welds inside the upper quarter panel vents. 
because the tops of the rear quarters were never replaced. Like that one right there, that's got two welds side by side. Well, they're probably jumped and they did two. So that's what you kind of got to look for. And then when you get past this line here, you can see where they spliced it. This is where that coupe panel was spliced in 40 years ago. You get into here is where we'll have to grind them. And I've already kind of ground a little bit to show what this looks like. And they barely really welded this thing on. Not like the factory did it. Like there's one, two, three, four, five welds when this should have had about 20. And then they really welded it in the, on this corner here. These are MIG welds. They deposit metal. Metal must be ground out. And this is a MIG welder. A MIG welder works off a wire. It's a wire fed welder. You can call it plug welding and it just fills in like a hole and it feeds wire it uses a, a, a gas and i'll be reusing brass as factory the hardest spot to drill the welds is where this drip rail molding is because you got to be real careful not to destroy the this rail right here if you destroy that rail then you're you're kind of in a bad spot and there's a lot of welds in this drip rail a lot of times it's better instead of drilling them just to grind the metal off the back side and then you won't have to make it look like Swiss cheese. Okay, that's about all of the marks. So I'm going to melt the lead out of it now. I'm getting the uh, torch ready here to uh, melt the lead out. A lot of people that have the skill to actually put the lead back in and you can find the lead, you can put lead back in. The drawback to that is lead has an acid contact that helps it stick. Putting it back in can, can cause a corrosion. And a lot of times you'll actually have corrosion when you melt it out. You'll see rust under it or some type of corrosion from the acid sitting there for 50 years eating on the steel. It's better to do it a modern way and actually put an epoxy primer in there and put a modern filler. The lead is toxic, especially if you grind it and breathe it. You usually want to wear safety equipment and masks and so on and so forth. But um, it's pretty neat to actually melt the lead out because once you get it to the right temperature, it just runs out like water. To kind of point the heat towards the quarter panel because we're cutting it off anyway, so it don't matter if you get it too hot and warp it. You want to protect your roof. So. This was all hand done. We melted it in there and then filed it down and it was never straight. Now you can see where the factory spot welded the edge of that roof to the uppermost edge of the quarter panel. Wow. Well, get the other side. So how do you know how to set your torch? I mean, what are you trying to do? What temperature? You don't want it to cut the steel. You just want a good hot flame. You just want to kind of melt that lead out. You don't want to get it too close. A brazen torch would probably actually work better. Mainly just want to protect the roof. You don't want to work the roof. Now, sometimes you, you got to go back and grind some of it out. You have a little speck here or there, but as long as you see all your spot welds, that's what you want to get to. When they installed the lead in the factory, it never was straight by no means. So there's a lot of detail work that you can do better with the filler. Now you can sometimes shape the lead, grind it down, shape it to where it's actually flatter. I usually like to grind it down where it's slightly lower and then go back with body filler and shape it. Like on the Mustang, for instance, it has a lot of sharp little body lines that come across the roof, comes around the window. And to mold that back in takes a lot of time when the lead, most of the time, it's not even there. So I use uh, the fillers and the modern uh, fillers to actually mold that in. So we got all the lead cleaned up and disposed of. It's a little different lead than it's got a different alloy and it's got acids in it to stick to the steel. You can get that drill bit right in the center of that weld. Then I'll drill a pilot hole in the uh, center of them with an eighth inch bit and you'll get the whole thing drilled out instead of it trying to move around on you. We got the spot welds up here on the roof. These are actually a pain. They're spot welds all the way through. So you got three pieces of steel there. So you got to drill the hole all the way through. Which took a lot longer than what you're seeing here. And those are just the pilot holes. They actually MIG welded that corner here and right there. 
Did the factory do that, Meg? Yeah, the factory did that. That's under the lead. So you have to kind of cut around that and then grind it out. 20, 30 years ago, you had to take a muffler cutter. Now we got some tools that'll actually, you can go in there and grind it out right now. That's a grinder and you can pinpoint your grinds. Like right here and in these corners, I can grind that little area out. The nice thing about this tool is you can get into tight spots and grind the welds instead of having to drill it where you can't really get a drill bit in or it'll damage it too bad. Or you can't get a muffler cutter. It's a muffler cutter just like this. And you can't really fit that in there without cutting the um, drip roll. So I can get this in there and I can grind that out without doing any damage to the drip rail. These belts will come off like that and you can get different grits. This is a 50 grit. This procedure is the same on the driver's side. See, the slight crack where I ground it loose and you can see the edge of the roof panel. Ground that weld right out of there. Now that should pop loose. And then we got a spot right here. Okay, got that. Now I'll start on the door jam. Meanwhile, inside the passenger side door jams, we find more MIG welds. This work was done in the early 80s when the coupe quarter panels were spliced in. This one I kind of ground around it and released it. Notice it doesn't hurt to grind off that sheet metal on the outside because that's part of the quarter panel and you just throw that away anyhow. But you're being very protective of the sheet metal underneath. They welded the corners really well and then they just kind of hit and miss on the spot welds. One about every half inch to every inch should be a spot weld. That's how the factory put it in. Okay, I'm going to go in here on the wheel tub where we were showing the uh, MIG welds earlier. Right here you can see each one of these welds. And there's not very many. They didn't weld it on very good. I'll grind out each one of these all the way to the next level until it releases. This is for where they had replaced the quarter already and MIG welded it. Well, these welds are done with a MIG welder and they're a plug weld so they drill the hole and they filled it in with a mig welder and you can't drill them out because it'll break your drill bit off in them and it'll dull the drill bit after about three or four welds so you have to grind these out instead of drilling them out don't want to go all the way through the next panel at all you want to save your next panel so you're just getting it thin enough to where you can get a chisel in there and pop it loose and then the metal's so thin that it just lets go and they're all MIG welds down low, not factory spot welds. Well, I'll probably do an air chill because I really can't see the welds at all. Here, here, and here, and there's three. I'm going to grind those out, kind of surgically remove the weld. Now, this right here that's been blasted is the drop-off panel. And they barely got this thing tacked. You can see a little tack here, 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 each one in little bumps. Each side has a trunk drop-off panel. They might be rusty. We'll see when we pull the quarters. I'm gonna see how that works. I think it's a little dull, but I may get a little more life out of it before I go to a new one. Okay, now for the really fun part. The quarter panel side vent. He chooses a drill bit the same diameter as the spot well. When you're drilling, you can actually see the layers. You'll see the layers kind of peel back and you'll see that top layer disappear. Your cue to quit and drill the next spot weld. You only want to really drill the top layer off. If you drill all the way through, you'll damage the metal underneath, but it's not a big deal if you drill all the way through. You can always weld it up. You just don't want to do that in all of them. Except up here. Pretty much most of the time you're going to drill all the way through because you got to drill through all three pieces of steel the the roof panel the quarter panel and the inner structure the roof panel overlaps the quarter they spot welded it and then they took a mig welder and they stitched, stitched it here stitched it there and then they leaded it over and if you 
drill through all pieces, all three pieces, it doesn't really matter because you're gonna weld it up with a MIG anyways. I'll go in there and I'll chisel this up and you pry the roof up ever so slightly and you put the quarter panel, the new piece up under it and then you, you hammer the roof panel back down and then you'll, through these holes, you'll see the roof panel and I'll go with a MIG welder and fill in those holes and grind it down. Where the seam is, a lot of people cut the quarter off that way instead of drilling those welds and then they'll cut the quarter panel with the muffler cutter and just butt weld that together. You don't get the structural integrity as a true weld and if you put fillers in there it could have a slight flex crack the fillers or something like that or it's just not structurally sound the way i do it i actually put the quarter panel under the roof panel and overlap it just like factory so all three pieces of steel are welded together with a mig welder and stitched together just as factory so you won't have any risk of anything cracking and the body will be structurally sound as original. Now like where you have holes, where you drilled it, you'll have to go back and fill them in with a MIG. You actually need both welders. Luckily, our original trunk is really nice, good, strong metal. Jason's gonna climb up here and drill out the spot welds in the top of the quarter panel, and they're all factory. You can see how close together these spot welds are. Of course, those holes are in the sheet metal that we're about to dispose of, the old quarter panel. What we're doing is drilling out each weld that held the quarter panel's metal sheet to the body. This weld is formed by an electric current that we can reproduce with a spot welder. A lot different. You can go on each side of the, of the metal and you touch these together, or you can do two at once. And that's an actual spot welds. There's no material, so you don't have to replace the wire. You don't have to replace the gas. There's no grinding. It's just welded and you're done. And you get a factory appearance. And that's why we're gonna restore these spot welds that were taken out here. Notice the rust in between the metal. That's what will really dull that bit. The edges and stuff are getting chewed up pretty bad. Use one of these new ones. That and then those curved areas. These bits are kind of designed for a real nice flat area but on these old cars. They got so many curves. Like up in here where it's all curvy. It'll chew on the outside of that bit and it'll take the chunks of it out. The curve combined with a little rust between those panels really is hard on drill bits. So do you think those things are loose now? They'll be stuck a little bit, but they'll be, if you can get a chisel on them, they'll start popping loose. Got one final seam, got right here where this, uh, the filler panel meets the quarter panel on it and they brazed it. So what I'm gonna do is take a muffler cutter and slice around this. And we get the quarter off, there'll be spot welds in there. You gotta go back and drill and get that little piece off and clean out this brass. What did you call that, a muffler cutter or what? Muffler cutter is what I've always called it. People have different names for them. That. I think the actual name is uh, a cutoff wheel. <laughs> Doing right here is I'm taking a muffler cutter. I'm going to cut right down where the quarter panel is because it's a very delicate area where this um, uh, drip row molding is. And then if you go ahead and get the quarter out of the way, you can go in there and get the welds, grind them off, and get it out a lot delicate than trying to drill them and stuff. We'll just slice it off for time being. <laughs> Here, I'm cutting, there's a brass where they brass brazed it. So I'm just kind of cutting around the brass so it'll release it and then you can go back and clean it off later.
For some reason, the brass is easier to see on this side. And I ground on it a little bit to clean it, so while I'm just going to kind of cut right around it. Yeah, I'm gonna do one cut with the muffler cutter around this seam here. Just instead of it make it a little easier if you slice that out and then delicately pry this out instead of taking an air chisel and just kind of manhandling it. But you do not want to damage the roof. So I'm gonna slice it and that, that'll release it and then I can go in there with a chisel and, and lightly do it by hand and pull that metal out. What I'm probably gonna do is I'll probably take the air chisel and I will zip it all the way down this body line. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom half will just peel off because this has been replaced and it's so lightly welded. I can work it a few times and it'll just fall off. Fastback quarters are, are a lot more than coop quarters. Coops are easy, easy and convertible. Fastbacks, they take a while. They're, they're a lot harder. There's a lot more to them. And doing two of them is extremely common. You always, 95% of the time, have to do both quarters. Okay, this is where the factory Shelby antenna hole was drilled. So I'm gonna cut this square out and kind of make a template where I can set this on the new quarter panel and put that hole back in the exact location that it was. I'll probably actually drill it when I actually get the get it on the car. And I don't know if they had a template at Shelby or if they just kind of put them anywhere around there. Every one of them might be in a slightly different location. Okay, now we got all the welds ground cut. It looks like we're about ready to chisel it off. I do have the doors back on the car and I set the gaps as close as I could. That way when you put the new quarter panel on, you know you have a lineup area. And this door is slightly higher than the quarter panel. And I do that on purpose because you, when you put the weight in the door, the door glass, the regulator, all that, that weight will actually push this thing down I, I, where the body lines line up perfect. A lot of people set them right on the money, empty, and then when you put all the guts in the door, they'll sag. Mm -hmm. well, this way the door will shut and line up perfect and not sag. And I've already rebuilt the hinges, so, so when I put the quarter back on it, I'll know I'll have a point to line up the lines where I want them. And note right here, this one is actually off from the factory that much. As you can see, the line's lined up perfect here, but then here, it's off. And that's just how these cars were. The other side is perfect all the way through. So they vary. Now, when I put the new quarter on, I can actually move the quarter and move it to where it all lines up perfectly. So uh, we're actually benefiting that by putting the new quarters on. We're going to have better gaps, body lines that line up better, because you can move and you can spend the time to put that quarter exactly where you want it. Now we're going to use a, this is a cutting bit. It actually slices and the metal will come out of the middle and, and actually roll up. So you can slice right down the middle of the quarter panel. flat bit. This is just a regular chisel bit. You could chisel the panel off.
it, we don't damage the inner panel. Just pop it right off. got the US postal still on it third month the second of 1982 when that was bought and they shipped it UPS and it went to Kansas City Kansas well this is the outer I mean, this is the inner both of them been replaced we already knew that but it was replaced with a Ford service part so technically that's like an NOS part and it's there's no rust in it so we can use that, no problem. We go and grind these welds, clean this up, weld it in better, because they how far the part these welds are. Yeah, well, they're like three inches apart. So I'm going to go in and put more welds, weld it in better, grind it down, grind all this smooth. Yeah, these are a, a plug weld from a MIG welder. So they put this in? This yeah, this, this and this piece here, you can see it's got the service part number on it. C7ZZ6527840. We could probably Google that number and see if this quarter panel was actually a coupe quarter panel or if they still, or if it was an actual fastback quarter panel that they sliced. More or less, it'll probably come back that this was a part number for a coupe and they sliced it in. You can see where it's been sliced in. They used a crimping tool and crimped it. And then they just spot welded it. They didn't weld it solid. They just spot welded it. Each one of these is a spot weld. Yeah, dirt dauber nest right there. Then right here, it looks like they actually drilled holes and pulled a dent out of a new quarter panel. And then they put lead and filled the holes in with lead. Yeah, that's probably a coop. Yeah, more or less, it was a coop quarter. Well, that came off pretty quick. That part did. The time consuming will be getting this rest of this off. Wow, and I thought we were pretty much done removing that quarter. The upper piece popped loose uh, easily around the roof area because I actually sliced sliced it around the seam with a, uh, a muffler cutter. Once all the welds are drilled properly, it just starts popping loose. There's all the spot welds that I drilled. You got a couple little bitty spots, like right here, where it kind of held the edge, and you'll have to chisel those off. And then right here, this is the corner I'm talking about, where you have to slice it and then go back in there, and there's a bunch of little spot wells that have to be drilled out on the inner piece. You can see that this up in here never had any primer on it, nothing. This was all bare metal from the factory. Modern cars, this would be all either galvanized, and then they dip the car, so all this is coated, they don't rust out. But this car was meant to last, say, three, four years, even right in here. This is a common rust. You can see the rust. This was bare metal from the factory. This is the trunk drop off. And then right here, you can see this hole is where the drain was originally. That's always rusted out. And this was rusted out, and this is why they replaced that quarter. Because all this was not ever repaired. And they just barely had it tapped there, there. And where they see the shiny spot is where it was welded. Never even painted. No, nope, never painted, which I'll go back, clean all that, 
put a coating and a paint on it so it'll be better than it was. Which will be done before replacing the rear quarters. So in the long run, taking these quarters off will preserve this car far better than if this was a rust car from the get-go. Kinda scary. And how else do you get to these rear panels under here except by removing those rear quarters? You'll have a lot more covered. Like I'll paint all of this area in here, clean up all this. This would be way better coated than it ever was for 1967. These you got to go in and, and hand chisel and be careful. You don't really want to use an air chisel on them and damage this panel or this panel. What are you trying to take off here? This whole little flat corner right here and of course this little piece right through here where I build the weld. That's delicate. Too. These are delicate because you don't want to damage this panel right here, your lip for your trunk. If you damage that then it'll it'll move and it'll throw your measurements off or your lineup points. So you want to be careful with these. You can take pliers and all this has to be removed by hand. You can't use the air chisel on. When I was saying there was three pieces, this is the inner structure and then you have the quarter panel and the roof and all that's welded together. So you have to go in there, you have to chisel the roof panel up and you have to chisel the quarter panel. This is what's left of the quarter panel away from this inner panel. You don't want to damage the inner panel, which is the inner structure. What if that thing was rusted? If this is rusted, Dynacorn actually makes it. All this is now reproduced. You can buy it new. Back then, you would have to find another car and get this off another car. But this is good. This is all in great shape. There ain't nothing wrong. There's no pitting. You got some surface rust, but that's common. But I'll clean all this surface rust off and actually use a red oxide primer over this. And then I'll use a weld through primer right through here for when I go back and weld it. As you can see where the metal has some slight rust in between. And that was what I was talking about earlier is when you're drilling, you'll hit this rust in between the metal and it dulls your bit. Now you mentioned the outer wheel wells are good. What about the inner? The inner is always good. Very rarely does the inner ever get any rust. If it does, it's right right here in this upper corner and there's no rust at all right there. So we don't have to worry about the inner. I mean, look. Oh yeah, the inners are great. There's no, absolutely no rust in the inner. The outers have been installed for the most part in the right place. They lined up good on the outer. So these just need to be welded in a little better and some detail work done right here in the trunk area. Like this part needs to be ground and cleaned with like the lineup hole. All that is in the right place. Yeah, this is your inner structure. This is what makes or breaks your car. Uh -huh. That popped off so nice. That's nice that it pops off that easy because then it saves that inner metal. 
In other words, if you hadn't drilled those out just right, it would have ruined the inner wheel. Yeah, you'd have ripped metal off of it, damaged it. But in the same way, this has a lot more rust down here. So I'll have to cut that up in here into the good metal and just put a strip across in there to save all this. You can get this trunk floor, you can get this whole piece, or you can get just this drop off piece. You can slice it like right on that corner and just put this piece, this whole piece in, but they're a little different. They don't usually have the hole in the right place, so this piece is a complete enough I can repair. I'll get this lip out, get these pieces out. This takes, this is what takes more time than anything. And see now I can get in here and drill this spot well here. There's one there and there's one right there. So there's actually only two. And then this little sliver here will pop away and we won't damage the filler panel. Now the brass, the brass can sometimes be a pain because that stuff actually is like liquid and it'll like flow in the nooks and crannies. So you have to be delicate and, and hand chisel where the brass is, especially like in here, you can't really melt it out, you'll warp it. So you just kinda gotta cut it, warp it, or take pliers and just work it back and forth until it breaks out. But we can get access to drills because otherwise you, there's no way you could have crawled up in there and drilled that without slicing it that way. This little edge here comes with the new panel, but we want to use the original because it's a good lineup point. And it's original metal and there's nothing wrong with it. So we can take this piece off the new quarter and reuse it because you have like this weld here, how it's kind of, it's not the best in the world. It's kind of sloppy. But, and then right here, we can save all that, that original look. A lot of times this trunk, uh, gully right here this jam is rusted out and you'll get leaves and stuff settled down in here and this will be gone so they make that now and you can replace it back in the day we had to used to have to make that from scratch or finding off another car or as you can see right here that's that same right piece here. right here so i'll drill these welds out and take this piece out and use the original oh. same way with this jam right here this cap i'll use the original piece and drill it off here and that gives you more original metal, plus this is a good lineup point. Your cap, everything will fit nicer if you use the original piece. But so if that's rusted out, you might as well use the new. 
our, our trunk is not even rusty. Yeah, right? there's not absolutely no rust in here. There's a little pitting around the drain, which that's common because they were a lot of times bare metal around there anyways when they put the plug in. And then the gas tank goes where that hole is. Yeah, it's so all, we don't... there's no horrible cancerous metal in the floors, in the corners of the floors. In the torque boxes. The torque boxes are not rusted out. Most of the time the torque boxes are gone, they're beat up. And this is 14 gauge steel. And nowadays, this is all rusted out and gone. Well, this is the original torque box, so we don't even have to unweld the original Shelby welding where they welded in the roll bar. Oh, that's perfect. It just needs a little straightening. There's some dings and dents in the floor, of course. The nice thing is the front frame rails are usually beat up, and these are perfect. There's not a dent in them. Actually, open it while I can. You get get it going. Yep. Like you actually couldn't see that spot weld right there. So I'll go back and drill that little weld and start rolling it. Then you'll hit another weld, so you go back and drill it. Ran into another spot there, huh? You can't see them. They're not really a suit there. original metal so you can see the, the surface rust it's actually in between the metal and I'll actually clean all this and put a uh, weld through primer on it that you can weld through it's, this is rust that you can address and prep that normally you wouldn't be able to put the quarters on oh you got more this has brass so it, you can't drill it, you can't really, you just gotta work it off. There's a spot where right there where it kind of ripped. The quarter's, part of the quarter's still on there? Yeah, right through here. And of course this lip right through here, still part of the quarter. And on the back side, you can actually see them. So you get the quarter off and you can come in mm -hmm. and you can see the dimple right there. There's a dimple, there's a dimple. So you can see them better from the back side than you could mm. the front. So now roll it up like a can. Yep, yeah, roll this up like a can. There's a little bit of brass in the corner. So that's gonna, we get like right there where they brazed it in. Sometimes you just gotta take a grinder and just grind it out. Grind it easier to, than trying to do anything with it. So that little speck there, I'll just take a grinder and clean that off. And then we got this little lip here. This is right where that splice was. So they got, it's kind of all welded in there. That's kind of a mess. May have to just grind that out. Yeah, they got it welded all the way through, so I'll have to take a grinder to that. Also, it can do a, 
you hand chisel it, it pops the welds loose, hand chiseling it isn't as violent as the air chisel, so you can delicately remove something. welds were and where I drilled them it just barely touched the inner it's what you want you have a good surface and plenty of metal to weld back to you don't have no holes through it so that's all off now yep that's all off use the uh, that's a weld through primer you can actually weld through it it won't burn other than the exact spot where you're welding at. Doing the metal work is my favorite part. Doing the cutting and the welding and building the actual car. Anybody can take any decent car and put a bunch of parts on it and make it look pretty, but building a car, fixing the rust, preserving the history is all in the sheet metal. The sheet metal is the car. These restoration shops say, oh yeah, I restore a car. And what, what they do, they put a bunch of new parts on it, new bumpers and stuff. They didn't restore it. This is the restoration. This right here, changing the quarters out, changing the floors out, building the actual structure of what is the car. That true bones, the foundation. Without the good foundation, you got nothing. The car, the body is the most important key. And that's how I've always felt. That's why I got into body work. That's why I wanted to learn how to do this because the body is everything. And this is what makes it look good. You got a lot of people that splice in those quarters. That's not gonna look good. It'll always be wavy. It'll always be what it is. But when you put a whole quarter on it and do it truly perfect, then it is perfect.